Morning folks, in the truck, Davy in the truck. Coming to you today from Glen Rothes, where it's a wee bit overcast, but it'll burn off, and it's about 8 degrees. Um, a different truck today, different camera angle. Um, so, I hope everything's fine, you can see me fine, and you can hear me fine. Anyway, let's get on. Corona, we'll start, again, we'll start with the coronavirus update. So here we go, these figures are for the 22nd of the 4th, 2020, and that was it for yesterday. Alright. Okay, tested in Scotland, 4,309. Tested positive in Scotland, 9,038. Active cases, that's those in hospital, in ICU, or at home recovering. 3,778 Dead And this is the daily figures The other figures to go away at Deaths in hospital Or of confirmed Coronavirus Or tested coronavirus People um, 1,062 The National Records of Scotland Released its numbers yesterday for deaths in the community up until the 19th of April, which was Sunday, so the total will still be higher than that. So add the two of them together, and the total to date, including hospital and community, is 1,616. As I say, that figure will be a wee bit higher because you have deaths in the community from the 19th till today. Okay. The First Minister will give an update at lunchtime today. And he apparently it's having a bit of a toll on her. And I can understand that. It must be very hard to have to front up in front of people every day and give such sad news. Your condolences go to all of, the, all of you who have lost a loved one, uh, lost a friend. To date, I believe Sarah and I are down three friends to this virus. Um, so, it's no funny. Anyway, let's move on to other things. Hey, um, let's move on. BBC apologises. This is the main BBC. This isn't the BBC Scotland. This is BBC UK. Apologises um, for getting the figures of deaths in care homes in Scotland wrong. Last night in its bulletin, the BBC reported that 615 people had died in care homes in Scotland. But as we know, the National Records of Scotland yesterday said that the total deaths in the community were 554. And deaths in the care homes were a pretty high. <laughs> um, they were about a third of the total death rate. So if the total death rate is 1,600, about 400 deaths in care homes in Clyman. People in care homes are vulnerable, you know. So anyway, the PBC apologise for getting it wrong. Unlike the me. Right. So Red Davy calls for... Public inquiry and the UK government's slow response to the crisis and failings in protecting the public and the NHS and other frontline staff. Now something's been bothering me about that. Something's been bothering me about this whole thing and the, the, the response in England. And it was racking, I had to go backwards in time to find what was annoying me. Right? And... I posted, sir, uh, I, I posted Professor Alison uh, Pollock's TED Talk for 2012 on my timeline. You can go and have a look. And it reminded me that there isn't an NHS in England. NHS England doesn't exist. It hasn't existed since 2012 when the Health and Social Care Act was introduced. And it devolved responsibility. Uh, sorry, it absolved the UK government of responsibility of providing health care in England. And it was devolved down into areas and district trusts. 
So the UK government has no requirement to provide health care in England. And that might well explain why they were slow to get involved and why they're still dragging their heels and getting involved. Because if they get involved, then that would make them responsible again for health care in England. And they don't want to be responsible for health care in England. So that was important. Um, and it might explain a lot. Right? And it also explains why the UK government had to set up a firm, a company, to procure and distribute PPE. The company that was set up was SCCL, and the health secretary, Matt Hancock, is the guy in charge here. And SCCL has devolved the responsibility for procuring, storing, and distributing PPE to a company called Movit. Never of that to come. Um, So as I say, what we're seeing in England is the UK government trying not to get involved. They don't want to take responsibility for public health because in the, in the Health and Social Care Act 2012, they absolved themselves from the responsibility of health care in England. That was important. Uh, the private company that a... Uh, the UK government has a brought in, or SCCL has brought in, to run supplying PPE and that for a huge warehouse in the outskirts of a Liverpool, apparently. And remember, two weeks ago they didn't have any warehousing. Apparently the PPE providers were hoarding that stuff. All of a sudden, there's a warehouse. And... It was being run by um, Movato, that's what it was called, up until two weeks ago, when it was sold to a U, uh, US healthcare company for $133 million or £107 million. That might also help to um, explain why they're making such a mess of getting PPE people in England for the warehouse that didn't exist a fortnight ago because PPE, PPE providers were holding it in stock for them. Amazing how these things all start to unravel and unravel and unravel as people start looking deeper and deeper into what's going on down there in England. But as I say, it's important to remember that the UK government don't have any responsibility for healthcare in England. They absolved themselves of that in 2012. Okay. So this company, a... Uh, Movato eh, was sold to an American healthcare company. Alright. Right. So what we're seeing in England is a shambles, but the UK government won't be held responsible for it because they absolved themselves of responsibility for that healthcare of the people of England in 2012. See, that's been bothering me for a wee while now. Um, when I've been calling for Boris Johnson to be a... Eh, done for criminal negligence. There was something always in the back of my head that said, these buggers are going to get away with it. Well, that's it. 2012, UK government no longer responsible for healthcare in England. The Scottish government, the Welsh government, and the Northern Irish governments, who are on separate NHS, uh, or on separate NHSs, still have responsible for healthcare for the peoples and their own nations. Okay. Moving on. Red Tory party leader, Fought the party formerly known as the Labour Party. Um, said his party wouldn't he, um, support universal income during this crisis. There you go. The so-called Labour Party. Party of the people. But we know it's not a party of the people because they've already said they don't represent the unemployed. They only represent the employed. Um has now said they don't support the principle of universal income during this crisis. But as I say, Mr Starmer, Sir Keir Starmer, get that into your heads, Labour supporters, Sir Keir Starmer <coughs> is totally owned, and I mean totally owned, by the British state. 
He's not a politician. He's an operative for the British state. Ah. Yeah. Better together bit here. You're going to love this. Rishi Sunak, the UK Chancellor, won't commit to supporting Scottish businesses if the lockdown has to go on longer in Scotland than it does in England. So when England comes out of lockdown, no matter what the situation is in the other parts of the UK, all financial support to businesses and people will stop. Now be listening to that. Do, do you get that? That's that better together, uh, pulling and sharing and looking after each other that was talked about. You know, don't leave as leaders. We're better together. Except for when you need something and we don't. We're better together unless they need something that we have. Eh, sorry, why will they need something we have? But because we don't control our own economy, in the event that Scotland has to be in lockdown longer, there's no support coming through Westminster. Won't commit to support. Okay? That's your better together for you. Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, won't commit to helping businesses in the other parts of the UK in the event that they have to stay in lockdown longer than England. Keep that in mind. If you add that to the don't sell PP to the jocks and the Welsh, we we'll begin to see a pattern here where that Westminster Parliament is nothing more than the English Parliament and the rest is can go and stuff ourselves. But we know that they're a bit xenophobic down there. Look at Brexit. Moving on. <laughs> Nightingale Hospital in London set up because of the pandemic is turning away people. It doesn't have any staff. All that money to set up a hospital that doesn't function. You see, you can't operate a hospital without staff. And the staff are all flat out in, their, in other hospitals. So there's no staff to man the Nightingale Hospital in London. Okay. Fails everywhere. And they finally... The First Minister, later today, will reveal the, her roadmap for us coming out of lockdown. Not going to be any time soon, but forward planning and a roadmap on how we're going to come out of lockdown will be revealed today. Good management. Good governance. Making that lot at Westminster look like what they are. Rank amateurs. Absolute rank amateurs. Compared to the Scottish government and the Scottish administration, that lot down there are circus clowns. Well, that's what they are anyway, circus clowns. Um, up here we have government. Down there, they should be wearing shirts with their sponsors' names on them. Let us know who owns them. Yeah, uh, so... That's it for the date. Andy Truck Davy and the Truck coming to you for Coin Rothis where it is um, overcast and about 9 degrees. Hey, stay home. It's going to clear up. It's going to be warm. Stay home. Stay safe. Continue to ensure that this virus can have a constant line of transmission. We have to break the transmission. If we break the transmission, we'll quash it. Okay, so stay home, stay safe, and have a nice day.